the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny. Don Wilson. Jack's special guest, Giselle McKenzie. And for his first appearance in this country, that sensational dancer from London, England, Mr. Gregory Winthrop. <laughs> the last time I'll ever pay anybody in advance. <laughs> From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny Program. <laughs> Presented by Lucky Strike, a light smoke, the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. A light smoke, a lucky strike. The right smoke's a light smoke, a lucky strike. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. <laughs> light up a light smoke. A lucky strike. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Now, the reason we had that rather unusual opening before the commercial is because that seems to be the latest trend now on television shows. You know, right off the reel, they want to give you something exciting before the commercial, something to shock you, you see. And although I do think that uh, uh, some of the programs overdo it, like, for instance, the other night I saw a program, a show where the television show where it started right off with an angry mob dragging a man down the main street of a town. Then they tied him to a post, you see. Then they put branches all around him. Then they lit fire, you know, lit the branches. Fire. And as this man was burning at the stake, Indians were shooting arrows at him from all directions. <laughs> I don't remember the name of that program. I believe it was the Loretta Young show. <laughs> Always so exciting. But you know, we have such a full show tonight. I'm not going to tell any jokes. I want to bring out my guest star right away, ladies and gentlemen, the young lady who is so talented and so lovely, Miss Giselle McKenzie. It's so nice having you on my show again. This is your fifth appearance, isn't it? Uh, no, no, Jack, this is my fourth appearance. On my show, the fourth? I, gee, it's funny, I thought it was the fifth time you were with me. Uh, no, no, you see, it's uh, my fourth appearance, and before I make my fifth, uh, I'd like to ask you something. What is it? Well, you see, um, you've been awfully good to me in the past, and you've helped me in my career a lot, and you've been very instrumental in getting my own program for me. But... But what? How many times do I have to be on your show for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a matter of conscience, and I haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Giselle, look at about... Uh, as long as you brought it up, I'd like to bring up a point to it. A couple of months ago, you were a guest on Ralph Edwards' This Is Your Life. And I did make an appearance on that show, didn't I? Well, Jack, I, I had a feeling that the reason you appeared at the studio that night was because you thought they were going to do your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, what made you think that? Well, all week long, you took crying lessons from Betty Davis. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't on account of the show. You see, I was expecting the county tax assessor. <laughs> but anyway, it's true. 
isn't it? You were a guest on Ralph Ed, This Is Your Life, and I did make an appearance, huh? Yes, and I wish you'd return my charm bracelet. <laughs> well, if you feel that way about it, all right. <laughs> glad to get rid of it anyway. Twice they threw me out of the steam room at Hillcrest. Uh, hey, Jack, there's a gold charm missing. I had it melted down for a filling. <laughs> now, look, why don't you get ready? I know they're waiting to hear you sing. You get ready for your song, and while you're preparing for it, I'll, I'll entertain them for the joke, huh? Okay. Okay. Well, I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. you know, ladies and gentlemen, I have a joke that I want to tell you. Now, as a rule, I do not tell jokes. I just sort of ramble along and talk, you know. But this is a wonderful joke. I think it's about a window washer who was working on a building, the City Hall building downtown in Los Angeles, you see. And he was washing windows on the 16th floor when suddenly his foot slipped. Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready! <laughs> Sail along, silvery moon delightful. I mean, what a great artist. Uh, about a week ago, I must tell you, I picked up Giselle McKenzie in my car, you see, and we drove up to Mulholland Drive, <laughs> all alone, just the two of us, you know. And I went to a spot that I had in mind there, you see, and I, uh, we were alone, you see, in the car, and I shut off the motor and everything. We just sat there and talked and everything, and it worked out great. She bought two lots from me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, if she intends to build a home up there, it'll be wonderful because uh, 
You know, the air up there is so much better than downtown in La Sand. Oh, this reminds me of this joke that I want to tell you about. This uh, window washer who was um, uh, washing windows downtown Los Angeles in the City Hall building, you see. And he was up on the 16th floor washing the windows, and suddenly his foot slipped. Oh, Jack! So, Jack! And just as he put... <laughs> Get this thing off of here. <laughs> no, 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 Jack. It's me, Don. Don Wilson. Oh, Don Wilson, for heaven's sake. I thought <laughs> you were something that fell off the top of a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> now, what are you what are you made up like that for? I mean, was it Well, Jack, you remember here just a few weeks ago, I did a commercial dressed in a Calypso costume. Oh, I remember that commercial, yeah, and the Calypso yeah. costume. And now you're dressed Chinese, huh? No, I am Siamese. Siamese? If you please. <laughs> well, heavens to Yul Brynner. <laughs> <laughs> and Don, you're, you're going to do a commercial, a Siamese dance? Well, yes, I am, Jack, but you see, a Siamese dance is you never done. You look like a doll. A <laughs> <laughs> Siamese dance is never done <laughs> by one doll alone, you see. It's always done by two or more people, so my son, Harlow, is here to help me. You're so Harlow! Come on out, son! <laughs> well, I've heard of the Siamese twins, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Harlow, you're going to, uh, you're going to help your dad in this dance? That's right, Mr. Benny. We're going to do a dance together. Well, isn't that wonderful? You and your daddy. Well, go ahead. Uh, say, aren't you afraid that uh, you're, you may lose your hat during the dance? Well, I don't know about daddy's, but mine is nailed on. <laughs> nailed on? You little thumbtacks, he makes a big thing out of. <laughs> well, look, I, I hate to keep the audience so anything like this. Did you? <laughs> this could be on anybody's show but mine. <laughs> Look at the fella. Now, I don't want to keep them waiting, so if you'll do... Do you mind if I stand here and watch it? No, will you stand right over there? Yes, All right. I'll be glad to. Come on, I see Harlow. this Siamese dance, this thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gentlemen from Siam, we are known as Slim and Slam. Very fine dancer that I am, yes I am. I can't Siam. From Siam. Someday, perhaps by chance, you decide to try this dance. First, you should fall and you land in advance. Take no chance before you dance. Around the world, it's lucky strike. Luckies have that taste you like. A plane or train or motorbike, these or quest. Smoke the best, smoke like you try. <laughs> Thailand may have you a river, but in Thailand, luckies are the winner. Line up that fine tasting lucky. You'll enjoy every pop on a lucky.
of you who tuned in late and missed that dance, congratulations. <laughs> now, I want to tell this story. If it kills me, I don't think anybody will interrupt again. Now, this, this story is about this window washer who was working on the <laughs> city hall building on the uh, 16th floor, and he was washing the windows when suddenly his foot slipped and he fell 16 floors down to the ground and sprained his ankle. So a fella walked over to him and he asked him, he said, how could you sprain your ankle falling, only sprain your ankle falling 16 floors? So he said, well, fortunately it happened in Los Angeles and the smog was so thick, you see, that it broke the floor. <laughs> so people, people kept asking him, why? Pardon me. Park the people. Pardon me. Pardon me. Wait a minute. Well, you're not supposed to come up here. Oh, I'm not supposed to. Well, I happen to be a member of the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. And I feel that it's my duty to defend our fair city against your disparaging remarks. Well, I, I didn't. I, you, you probably thought that joke was very funny that you just told about the smog, but I didn't. Well, I, I, I mean, I only did it as a joke. I mean, I certainly didn't mean anything. I don't it. care what you meant. I'm getting sick and tired of people making jokes about the, the conditions of smog in the Los Angeles area. Well, they say it's a menace. I happen to be born right here in the city of Los Angeles, and I have lived here all my life. Well, and I'm very happy to say it's a very wonderful city. Well, I'm glad you did. Of course, I we do have a, a very mild, mild condition. <laughs> <laughs> but cheap comedians like you would, ha <coughs> would have people believe that there hangs over this city <coughs> a strong light pall of fumes that taint the atmosphere. <coughs> He's a, he's a counter spy from Florida. <laughs> oh, no, he'd be wearing snowshoes. <laughs> oh, Giselle, Giselle, come back here, will you please? You know, I'm not going to let you get by with just singing a number alone. You know, as a rule, you and I do du a duet together with violins and everything. Uh -huh. Hey, what do you got there? Well, it's this week's issue of Life magazine. I was just reading it. You know, there's a great big spread in here all about you. No. <laughs> And look what it says here, right. Jack Benny, Square of Hollywood. Let me see this. That's Squire. <laughs> Squire Square. Oh. Well, anyway, it's a very good article. You ought to go out and buy a copy. Well, I will. I'll, I, I'll wait till Wednesday. I'll see it in my dentist's office. Want to borrow my charm bracelet? Never mind. <laughs> now, look, Giselle. You and I, we ought to do a violin duet. Something new, though. Something we haven't played before. You know, they always like it. Oh, uh, will someone bring out the violins, please? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gregory Winthrop. <laughs> thanked him. He can't hear me. <laughs> well, what do we play? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, as a rule, we play a number alone, just the two of us, you know, but I thought that this time, just to add something, I'd have some of the boys of the orchestra come out here and have a sort of a jam session. Hey, fellas, come out here, will you? Oh, goody. Thank you. Now, of course, uh, uh, you know who all these boys are, but they, uh, uh, the, the audience. I'd like to introduce them to the audience. This is our pianist, Charlie Bagby, and this is, uh, this is our clarinet player, Wayne Sanger. He, he look very good. He's been blue ever since Jane Mansfield got married. <laughs> this is Frankie Remley, our guitar player. Here. Uh, we're very proud of Frankie. He just performed a wonderful test for the government. 
He stayed seven days in a bottle. <laughs> Don Rice, our bass player. And Sammy Weiss, our drummer. Now, now come on, now we'll play a number. Jack, what? Jack, uh, who's this fellow standing here on the end? What does he play? Well, oh, oh, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't play anything. He's their parole officer. <laughs> I won't need you. I'll be responsible for these fellas. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny. I can't leave them unless someone will put up bail. Well, I'll... How much would it be? I mean, I don't mind. Well, uh... About a dollar and a half ought to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take that. Gee, it's gone up. Yeah. It used to be only 50 cents. <laughs> now... I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's. What, what, what would you suggest that we play for the boys? Well, how about a kind of a hot number? You know, something like a Dark Town Strutter's Ball or a Sweet Georgia Brown, something like that. Something like Sweet Georgia Brown. Well, that ought, that ought to be good. Sweet right. Georgia. Now, look, at. we'll alternate, you see. I'll take one strain, you take the next, then I'll take one, and then you the next. You know, you each take a... sort of share the responsibility? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give us an introduction on Sweet Georgia Brown. <laughs> the arrangement <laughs> the boys have for this number. Excuse me, just a minute. <laughs> I, didn't like the, I didn't like their arrangement. Let's take it again. Wait, wait. Because I put up their bail. <laughs> anyway, if you want to play it nice and have the orchestra soft, don't show off. I begged you a million times we played, don't show off. Just play the counter melody. Whatever, you, whatever you say, Squire. Oh. <laughs> Let's play it together. That old favorite, tea for two. Oh, tea for two for the encore. Mr. Benny, I, what I, do you I, want I'm, now? I'm a little ashamed for having interrupted you in the middle of your show and bawling out about that smog game. Well, that's all right. Well, that's it, all right, it thanks. Was, it was a very cute joke, and, uh, and I apologize. Well, that's all right. That's, we have a number now. You can, you can use that joke anytime you want to. Well, okay. Just leave it. We have a number to do. Give us a Give us a
Jack will be back in just a moment, but first, here's a word about a light smoke, Lucky Strike. <laughs> Light up the light smoke, a lucky strike. The right smoke, the light smoke, a lucky strike. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Light up a light smoke, a lucky strike. When you smoke a lucky, you're smoking light. Lucky strike means fine tobacco, superbly light naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to enhance the lightness, to make the taste even better. So, light up a light smoke. Light up a Lucky. For the light smoke you light, light up a Lucky Strike. Light up a light smoke, a Lucky Strike. You'll say a Lucky is the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Thank you very, very much for being on the show. And I, I'm sorry, I have hardly time to say good night. You Thank were you such can. a wonderful audience that we went, we went way, way over. Thank you very much. Next Sunday, be sure and watch Bachelor Father, starring John Forsythe. I'll be back in two weeks with my guest star, Jimmy Stewart. See you. Next time. <laughs> Appearing on tonight's program are Mel Blank and Dale White. Words and music for Two Gentlemen from Siam were written by Malin Mary. Remember one week from tonight on this station, be sure and watch the new Bachelor Father show starring John Forsythe. And next Friday on most of these stations, watch the exciting new series about the Texas Rangers, Crackdown. Brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company. Remember, tobacco is our middle name. And here's a word for filter tip smokers. Mildness, 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 mildness makes the difference. That's something Tariton taught me. When you smoke a lot, Tariton's mildness does make a difference. You get more enjoyment all the way. Mildness, 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 mildness makes the difference. Smoke, filter tip, tarry tip, filter tip, tarry tip. Mildness makes the difference. Jack Berry's next television program will be in two weeks with his special guest, Jimmy Stewart. This is Don Wilson saying good night.